Hello and welcome back to the Veg Garden where the story for this video starts or I should say started about six months ago. It's now the end of November and the winter veggies are looking great but earlier in the year we had a completely different set of vegetables down here in the garden. Tomatoes, peppers, lots of pumpkin, beans, all sorts of things but in particular something that did very well this year because we had way too many plants was courgette. We had about three different varieties and they were all really, really productive. And we made all sorts of things with them. Soups, relishes, curry sauces. We put a bunch in the freezer as well. But even so, we had so much that we just didn't know what to do with it. And so we thought we would do a bit of an experiment. And if you've been following us for a while, you know that we like to turn all sorts of weird and wonderful things into alcohol. And so that is what we're gonna do in this video. I have no idea how it's gonna turn out, but we're gonna make wine out of courgettes. Let's take a look at the recipe so you can get an idea of what we're gonna be making, and then we'll show you the whole process and we'll finish up with a taste test full of lots of descriptive words. So for our courgette wine recipe, we're gonna need some courgettes, six kilos of yellow courgettes, which will have been pre-frozen. We're gonna have 800 grams of white wine grapes, but I guess any kind of white grapes would do some ripe banana, some sultanas, the juice of a couple of lemons, a little bit of grated or finely chopped ginger, some granulated sugar, quite a lot of sugar actually, so that there's plenty for the yeast to eat and turn it into alcohol. We'll also need some water and some yeast. So now we know what's involved, let's head to the kitchen and see what Kylie's got to say about courgette wine. Can I help you? Yes. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts on courgette wine. Are you looking forward oh. to tasting this delicious nectar from the veg garden? <laughs> so we actually have two different types of courgette. The ball squash, as we call them, or one ball. They're a UK variety. And then traditional zucchini courgette. Um, we grew yellow and green correct. zucchini. But we're using just the yellow for the wine because we think it would be slightly better for colour. If I were doing just these courgettes, I wouldn't be that excited. But these courgettes are really, really sweet and taste a little bit like a honey courgette. It's almost melon-like yeah. in a way. So I think that's gonna be really, not that a lot of the flavor carries through when you do a fruit wine or a vegetable wine, um, but I think that that's gonna give it the best chance of being interesting. I'm dubious that you can make a good wine from vegetables. Well, I'm dubious that we can make a good wine. <laughs> Based on our track record, yes. it's about 50-50. Yeah, we're not doing that well. But, you know, it's interesting to try. We had a lot of the ball courgettes. Um, most of it I cut up and put into the freezer so that we can use it throughout the year. But this is a great way of using up a load of it. So we have, I think, four bags here, which is about, it's about six, six kilos. kilos. So one of these, these are, these are harvested quite small because the plant is right at the end. We got much bigger ones and they were one to two kilos each. Oh, still almost a kilo, okay. Um, so maybe the other ones are more like one and a half to two kilos each. Anyway, I'm excited to try this. This combination of ingredients does not look like it should produce anything interesting, but we'll see. So in terms of the winemaking process, if we can even call this winemaking, it's very, very simple. We just chop and prep and squeeze and crush all of our ingredients, put them into a nicely cleaned and sanitized fermenting bucket, which is food grade. When it came to adding the sugar, we took one and a half liters of the amount of water in the recipe and boiled it up to help all the sugar dissolve. And then we added all of our other ingredients to it, gave it all a good stir, and top the rest off with cold water. Mm -hmm. The bananas were a bit of a tricky one. Um, we probably should have pre-mashed them with a fork or a potato masher or something like that, but we just chucked them in and uh, used the back of the spoon to press them against the side of the bucket, which did work eventually. As I mentioned in the recipe, the courgette had been previously frozen and then defrosted, and this is really helpful to get all of the uh, liquids and juices flowing 
uh, rather than being all tightly bound up in all the fibres of the vegetable. Interestingly, we noticed that during the defrosting process, some of the uh, liquid in the courgette bags had already started to ferment, which I guess is a good sign. So uh, we'll watch this space. Before we put it aside, we did a quick hydrometer reading and we had an original gravity of 1088, which is quite high for a country wine. So we'll see how it turns out. We sprinkled the yeast and gave it a bit of a stir, add a bit of oxygen at this stage to aerate, which will give the yeast a good start. Then we covered it with a muslin cloth and uh, put the lid on top nice. just to secure it all in place. It feels like, you know when you're in primary school and you do these weird science experiments like exploding volcanoes and things, it feels a bit like that. That's why I love home brewing. It's <laughs> like cooking, chemistry and booze. Oh, that's very surprising. That's actually quite nice. Um, Have we created something incredible <laughs> and delicious? It the... actually tastes a bit like melon juice rather than courgette and there's a lot of sugar in here obviously but also I think because like we said these, these bull squash are really sweet like honey that's really coming through. Mm. Mm. I mean you could have that as a drink now. <laughs> that's quite nice. Mm. That's delicious. <laughs> right? You can make a cocktail with that. It's nice, huh? Yeah, you can taste a bit of the banana. I don't know how to describe it. Use your words. I'm going to try and use my words. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely taste the banana. It's got that kind of sweet, slightly, slightly acidic, slightly kind of mouth tingly kind of thing that you get after eating a banana. You know what I'm talking about, right? No. No? You don't no. know? <laughs> It's very, very sweet. I mean, we hit a gravity of 1088. So this, if this ferments completely dry, it will go almost 14% ABV, which is quite strong for a country wine. Mm. And I think it's a combination of the squash and the grapes, which is giving it that kind of tropical melony. Yeah. That's really nice. It's lovely. Well, we have to wait some time to see how this how this progresses in fermentation, um, but so far so good. So far so good. So after about a week, the primary fermentation, the vigorous part of the fermentation where the majority of the sugar is consumed by the yeast, had completed. We had stirred a few times during that time just to make sure that all of the vegetables and grape skins and sultanas and all that stuff were always covered in the liquid so there was no risk of anything going horrible and mouldy on top. And at this stage we transferred what I guess could now be called wine into some carboys or demijohns just filling up to the shoulder uh, and then we used a slightly smaller one for what was left over. We also took a gravity reading at this stage and it had gone very, very dry indeed at 0 0.990. And then we put these bottles aside in a dark place to undergo their secondary fermentation for a few months. But that is now done. It's time to see what it tastes like. So today's the day. We get to taste this uh, vegetable Concoction. wine. <laughs> are you are you ready? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is one I don't. I really don't think it's going to work. But. But do you not remember that when we tasted the must, we actually quite liked yeah, it? Yeah. Um, let's see. But that was some time ago. It was. We've left it a little bit too long, I think. Uh, maybe, but I was hoping for it to clear up. Yeah, it's been in the fridge and hasn't done the, what's it called, crashing that it's meant to. Cold crashing, yeah. Can I can this enough for you? You don't drink wine? Let's see. So yeah, we've left this for some time. It was a little bit kind of murky and cloudy, so I put it in the fridge for, I think, a couple of weeks now to hopefully cold crash it, which just gets all of the proteins and the yeast stuff to kind of coagulate at the bottom to make it easier to get a clean 
uh, a clean rack or a clean bottling from it. That hasn't really worked. It's still a little bit kind of murky and sludgy. I think one of the things that we do differently next time is put all of the, the fruit and the grapes and the ginger and all the other ingredients into a bag so it was easier to keep all the stuff separate from the liquid. Um, but we are going to bottle this today and we're going to try a bit of it as we, as we do that. Those bottles can then be put aside to continue to condition and mature or just go straight in the bin. <laughs> so I think what we'll do is we'll do the, do the taste test first just in case there's no point in bottling it and uh, take it from there. You seem a lot more positive all of a sudden. I mean, it shouldn't be any good, right? Courgettes. So it's not vinegar. Good. This is gonna sound crazy, but it makes me think of a Chardonnay. Yes, that crazy. Uh, it's not got any oak in it. No. So an unoaked Chardonnay. It's quite dry. Well, it fermented bone dry. Yeah. Um, the colour also makes me think it's like a slightly yellowy... You try it, I don't have any words. The colour is pretty good. It's maybe a little bit... That's quite clear. I mean, sorry about all the tools and building stuff in the background. <laughs> it's fairly clear. It, it's got a little bit of a haze to it still. Let's see. It's, it's definitely reminiscent of more of wine than some of the others that we've made. We've made like cherry wine, peach wine, plum wine, Just pear wine. Just get it and taste it. Mm. It's really good. <laughs> right? <laughs> How funny. That tastes like a nice, light, crisp, it's white nice wine. wine. Yeah. It's, got, it's got quite a lot of acidity to it, actually. More acidity than I was expecting. It's actually really good. You can't... When we tasted the, the must before it had fermented, you could definitely taste some of the individual ingredients. I remember being able to taste the banana and a, there a, was a little bit of heat from the ginger. Um, of course, the grapes gave it a huge amount of sweetness. This just tastes... It tastes quite boozy, actually. I, I've a bit definitely... Of you could, yeah, there's a, there's a bit of that kind of banana -y note in there somewhere. It's actually really good. It reminds me quite a lot of a, a Portuguese green wine or vinho verde. It's very refreshing. But we've got some bottling to do, so I'm gonna put the camera down, we're gonna bottle the rest of this, and then maybe we will reflect on how surprising it is that you can make something drinkable out of courgettes. Yep. Looks I mean, good. It's not clear. No, it's not 100% clear. I wonder if some of this is also from the banana. Maybe. So there we go, seven bottles out of our batch of courgette wine. I think we probably would have got a bit more if there wasn't so much sludginess in there. There's a couple of things that I would tweak about it next time, mostly from a process perspective, because I think the recipe is actually pretty good. And I'm actually very, very surprised. <laughs> I've been trying to think if there's anything else that I can say about it. One thing I noticed was that on a bit of an exhale after uh, enjoying another sip or two, I could definitely get that kind of banana-y aftertaste, which was very pleasant. In terms of body, it's a little thin, a bit watery, but not, again, not unpleasant. It just kind of gives it that light crispness, which is, uh, which is very refreshing. I think it would be nice chilled on a summer's day. Maybe at the end of November is not the best time to be drinking it, but, <laughs> but it's booze, we'll take it. So yeah, a bit of a surprise, but uh, a nice surprise, which is good. And we'll add it to our list of recipes to try again and uh, see if we can improve it even further over time. Just before we go, I think Kylie has an update for you. So I like to have backup plans. And just in case that wine is no good in a couple of months time, I also have this, which is our Tangicello. 
So if you watch the video where we took a load of tangerines and chucked them in some aquadent, that is said bucket, this is now the resultant liqueur. So this is 400 mils of the aquadent that's been infused with tangerine, tangerine skin and then 600 mils of a sugar syrup. And we've already had a bottle of this a couple of months ago. It's very good. This will it's be our really Christmas good. bottle now. Uh, I also have some limoncello in the making somewhere else as well. Um, so yeah, if you know if the courgette wine doesn't work out, we will just sip on tangicello instead. And if that doesn't work out, we've got grape ale and persimmon wine and a little bit of a test batch of cider going in the background. So many more boozy experiments to come in future, but I think that is it for this one. We will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.